Hideaway Homestead. We're going to be talking today about how to cut up a chicken. How to divide it up into those normal parts, as we call them, into legs and thighs and breasts and that sort of thing. So we're going to show you how to do this. So here we go. First thing we usually do is, if you want to keep this part of the wing on there, that's fine. You can leave it. Otherwise, we take them off because we don't really keep them. There's not really any meat on this part of it anyway, so we don't keep it. What I do is I just hold on to it, find the joint, and if you find the joint and you got a really sharp knife, you can just cut right through that and it comes right off. If you don't and you hit bone, it's going to be a lot of hard work because the knife just won't cut through the bone. And we do the same thing on this side. Cut that off like that, and we're done with that. Now, what we always like to do is when we do ours, and again, this is preference, we take the wings off separate from the breast. And if you want to leave them on, you can. But for us, we take them off. Same thing. You turn it over, and underneath, if you can see it, but underneath there's a spot right up under the arm. You just want to sort of cut right into there. And what I usually do is make a cut and then I pull it down so I can find that joint. And once you find the joint, then you can cut it just like that. As you saw how quick that went through. Of course, this nice knife is very sharp. But once you find that joint, then you can just cut that wing off just like that. And then you're, there you go. Now, sometimes some people like to cut these in two. We do make this into two pieces. And again, you can find the little joint and the elbow, I call it right there. And then just hold on to it, and then I just pull my knife up and slice right through it, and you're done. And then we do the same thing over here. With that, pull down. You can find the joint. You can see it right there, that white part right there. That's the cartilage or whatever, the joint of the wing. And you just cut right through that. Just keep moving it and cutting it until you get that to go through, just like that. And then we'll take this apart also, just because this is how we like to do it. You don't have to do it this way, but you, we do. Okay, so those are done. Next, we're going to do the legs. And again, when you cut this, if you pull the leg in tight, all this is is skin right here. So if you put your knife up close to the breast of the bird, like that, that's how I do it, like this, and then just slice, it'll come right out. And you can see. And then you just pull down on the leg, and what we usually do is I just grab it and pull it until you hear it pop, and it'll actually pop out of the joint of the leg. Get that where you can see it. I got too much meat in the way. There it is. Okay. So there's the joint right there. So then all you have to do is just cut behind that joint so that you're not cutting through the bone. And then just take that part off and there you go. And again, you can leave the thigh and the leg connected or you can take them apart. We usually take the ours apart most of the time. Okay, now when you cut the leg away from the thigh, if you take your finger and feel in here, you can feel the joint of the knee. It's like right there. If you feel it, that's the soft part. So if you can put your knife in that soft spot, let me get that skin out of the way, you can see it better. The soft spot is right there. If you cut into that part, it's easy. If you miss, then you're hitting bone. Just like that. So that's it. And now, now all you have to do is just slice through it and you're done. Now you have a thigh and a leg. Drumstick. Or a drumstick, we call it. <laughs> okay, I turn it around and do the same thing over here. Put my knife in that spot right there, hold on to the leg, and just make a slice. And it's opened up where you can see what you're doing. This part, this one actually, <laughs> part of the back came along, came with it. It, it, it just broke right here. And that's the, this is part of the back. It didn't separate where I wanted it to. So I've got to find 
that joint and there it is you see that bone pop out that's the leg bone right there that's where the joint is so it's going to be over here so I just take my knife and go into that spot right there and we can cut that away and that gets it away from the back see there's the rest of the bag it tried to go with it and again I put my knife and you can do this however you want to but what I usually do is hold on to the leg I put the knife with the blade up and then I find a joint with my thumb and then I grab, and, and some people can't do this because their hands aren't big enough, and that's fine. But I grab a hold of the bone like this and hold on to both of them. And then just pull my knife up through there. And then you can turn it over if you need to. After you make a little bit of a cut. And then just cut right into there. And there it is. If you leave those uncut, then basically you've got what is sold as a leg quarter. Right. Uh, you go to Boston Market or something like that, and you can order a leg quarter. Quarter, which would be the drumstick or a leg and the thigh so that's what they call a leg quarter right. those are dark meat so yeah. if you like dark meat there tend to be the most moist cuts okay now what we're going to do is we're going to separate the back from the breasts what I usually do is I flip it over and I hold on to the back part of it because if you try to hold on to the, the breast side there's not enough to grip a hold of and you can't hold it very well so I hold on to the back, and then I take my knife, and these are ribs. The ribs are in here and over here. And what I usually do is I take my knife, and I just cut through those ribs, like so. Like that. Once you get down to there, then you can stop and then just pull it apart, and it pops open. And there again, you can see the shoulder joints up here on either side. And again, those are just cartilage. If you find the right spot, you can get that, cut through that. And it may take a little bit of work. Sometimes I find them real quickly and sometimes I don't. Um, you just have to sort of take your time and cut through here and find it. There we go. There's that one. This is part of the neck that's still on here right there. And then you just come in here and cut like that. And then you got your back separated from the breast. There's not a lot of meat on the back. And so what we've done recently is to just boil them and pull the meat off and then make broth out of the juice from boiling them. And that makes really good broth and you got some really tender meat, but there's just not a lot of it. You're not going to get full eating backs. Right. Okay, now this center part right here, this is the center of the breast. This is cartilage right in here. From, from about right here down is just cartilage. It's real soft. From here up to here is bone, and that's pretty tough. So what, why, what I usually do is I put my knife right in the middle, and I just push straight in, and then just come down and cut that part right there in half. Now, the hardest part of doing this whole process is cutting through this bone right here. And what you have to do is just, I use a bigger butcher knife like this. I, and you noticed I was using a smaller knife like this to cut the other stuff. But when I do this, I switch over to a bigger, heavier knife. Because it's thicker and it's, and it's got more strength. And I just push it straight in. And then just push down. And just keep working the knife in there. And just breaking that bone. And there you go. So and that's all there is to it. So now it's split. Now, if I want, want to, I can switch back to my other knife, or I can use this one if it's sharp enough. And then all you have to do is just cut straight through the skin, or the meat, just like that. And now you have two separate pieces. There we go. There's one side, and there's the other. So now we have two breasts, or two halves, whichever way you want to say it. <laughs> And it's ready to go. So now we're ready to package it up. We package ours in Ziploc bags, freezer bags. And we label them with the date. We just put the month and the, and the year sometimes. And sometimes we put the day. It doesn't matter. Um, and what we usually do, for since there's just two of us, we will put usually a, a leg and a thigh in one package. We can do a wing set, too. Uh, yeah, in this case, we could throw some wings in there. What we did with 
when we were doing so many of them the other day was we made up bags of just wings. Yeah. And so we can shake and bake those or barbecue them, something like that. But for just two wings, it's really not enough to make a meal out of. Right. And these were large chickens. If we had bought um, leg quarters from the store, usually they're not this big. And so we might need to put more pieces in to make up a meal. But these are so big that I think we're going to be able to easily make a meal. And those breasts have been turning out to be like a pound or more uh, each because sure. these birds are so big. So um, we figure we can probably get several meals out of that, but we're putting them individually in a gallon size Ziploc. Yeah, it really just depends on how many people you're feeding. You know, if it's just for two people or something, then you know, this, this is for two people, this is just us. Um, so this works out good for us, but if you had, you know, if you've got children in your family or something like that that you're feeding more people uh, than just two, then you would want to put more pieces in your packages, obviously. Um, but for the most part, you know, it's just uh, these one, one or two pieces in there works out great for us. So now pretty much all we need to do is dispose of these wings, tips that I cut off here, and figure out what we're going to do with the back off of the bird. Uh, we probably will boil that or something, and Carol usually boils them and gets the meat off of them, and then we use it for stuff like uh, you know, chicken salad or, or whatever we're cooking, if we need uh, pieces of meat for something like that. Also, we get uh, the, the broth from it, and we use the broth and put it in cans. We can it in a canner, and then we can put it in the closet and store it. And then if you need uh, a chicken flavor sometime for something else that you're cooking, you can put it in that. So that's what we do with ours. Some of these uh, these birds that we have that we butchered uh, here recently, uh, we, we leave them whole and we just wrap them up in freezer paper and put them in the freezer with a date on them, of course. And we usually weigh them if we can and find out how much they weigh so that we know whenever we're ready to cook them how long it's going to take to cook it. So that's what we do with uh, the ones that we have that we don't butcher. We leave them as, as whole fryers or roasters. Carol calls them roasters. Uh, so we can put them in the freezer and keep them whole. Uh, most of the ones that we've done this time have been usually around six and a half, seven pounds almost. So they're quite large. So if you wanted to, you could uh, carve them like you would a turkey and get big slices of meat off of them. Um, instead of just, you know, tearing them apart or cutting them up or whatever. So that works out well too. So several things you can do with these. If any of you have had experience with any of this type of thing that we're talking about here, leave us a comment in the comments section. Tell us what you've done with yours. Um, if you've got ideas about uh, what to do with um, chicken or whatever that we may not have thought of, tell us about it. We're always uh, open to learning about new things, new ways to cook stuff or whatever it is. So uh, you know, let us know. Give us comments on that. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. It would really help our channel a lot if you would subscribe and also get your family and friends to subscribe. If they're interested in this sort of thing, have them subscribe too and then they can learn as well as uh, the rest of us do. So until next time, thanks for joining us here on Hideaway Homestead.